five are their own and do not necessarily reflect the philosophy and policies of normal. Listener discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think we need to rethink and personalize our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws presents... We love the earth. Normal Show Live, Marijuana Nation. Now, here's your host, Normal's Outreach Coordinator, Radical Russ Belvin. Ah, yes. Good day, tokers and tokets. Welcome. It is Tuesday, May 8th, 2012, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. Welcome to the show. We've got all sorts of great stuff to bring to you here and a full house of people to bring it to you. Sitting to my right, of course, in the pirate's chair is Ganja John. How you doing, John? What's up, Russ? How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing fantastic and uh, loving the hat there. What's you up like with that, that hat? What is that? That's a, a grassroots California Pac-Man ghost hat. Oh, well. Ghost well, house hat. Of, is of course it is. What of else? Course. The hell could I think it was? Grassroots <laughs> California makes awesome hats. I wear uh, I wear a lot of them. Hanging out here on the far end of the table, we got both Wiz Coleco and Brian Blank chilling out on on the mic over there. How you guys doing? Hello, people. Old school Denver Nuggets hat in the house. All right. Digging on that. All right. We also got Todd Armstrong here with Todd's Toker Topics. How you doing, Todd? And not too bad. How you been? Great. What do we got for our topic today? Following your dreams. Oh, and speaking of dreams, I understand you recorded a DVD. Yes, with the help of uh, Ganji John, of course. Oh, fantastic. We'll talk about that and more coming up in hour two here as well. But first, let's go to our virtual studio in Grastoria, Oregon, where our senior news editor, Cannabis Carrie, is hanging out. Hi, Carrie. Hi, full studio. I know. And, you, and, and the virtual studio is back, too. The virtual studio is back. Apparently, uh, when the heat gets over 70 in Astoria, our internet doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, just blazing heat waves there. Yeah, <laughs> All right. What do we got in the news today, Carrie? Uh, well, today we're going to talk about um, an interesting council meeting in a smaller town in Virginia. Also, we're going to go to Montana, where uh, some uh, people that are making a lawsuit are looking for some donations to continue that lawsuit. But uh, first up, we've been talking about, I know you talked about an hour or two yesterday, but uh, that landmark uh, historic uh, passage of a bill in Connecticut, we're going to talk about that first up on the hemp headlines. All right. I have also, I've also got some news from across the pond where the uh, GW Pharmaceuticals cannabinoid drug Sativex has gotten approved in more countries. We'll tell you which ones and how that bodes for medical marijuana here in America. Also coming up on today's show, it's Electric Tuesday, but I'm going to take a break from the electric tunes and bring you video from one of the bands that played at Cinco de Mota in Dallas. We got some music from Bum Lucky, so check that out coming up at 20 after. And then after we get uh, done with Todd's Toker Talk, we're going to give you a whole collection of videos from two different locations at the Global Cannabis March. Uh, I was out in Dallas. We'll bring you some videos where the CBS 11 News team came out, as well as the uh, executive director of DFW Normal, Sean McAllister, his speech there at Cinco de Mota. Then we're going to come back to Portland, my hometown here, for their March videos. Our own Herb Thrasher was in one. We've got John Lucy for another one. And we've got Sarah Frank from Moms for Marijuana. All of that from the Portland March, plus more coming up right now on Normal Show Live. Stay tuned. You're listening to Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. Weedmaps.com. I'm Radical Russ from Normal. In my job as outreach coordinator, I travel every month, and when I'm on the road, I need a fast, accurate way to find the medical marijuana dispensaries in the area. So I turn to Weedmaps.com. Weedmaps.com has the best dispensary locator online or on your mobile device. Search by zip code or let Weedmaps find you, and in seconds you'll have the addresses, phone numbers, and customer service reviews for the medical marijuana dispensaries in the local area. Weedmaps.com also has a section devoted to helping you find a doctor who understands and recommends medical marijuana under your state's law. You can even check prices on the Medical Marijuana Stock Exchange. Coming soon, you'll even be able to find the listings of normal attorneys and chapters, local head shops and grow shops, and the best weed-friendly businesses. Weedmaps.com has the information you need to be an informed cannabis consumer. Visit Weedmaps.com today, a proud sponsor of the Normal Network. 
This is Normal Show Live. Hi, I'm Radical Russ. One of the best things about marijuana is the wonderful aroma. But when you travel a lot like I do, that aroma becomes a suspicious smell. That's why I endorse Stealth-Products.com, the leaders in smell-proof containers. From smell-proof vacuum bags to smell-proof backpacks and duffel bags, all the way to smell-proof digital safes, Stealth-Products.com has you covered. Stealth-Products.com brings you safe, secure, odorless layers of protection with activated carbon fiber. Backpacks and duffel bags are simple black so as not to attract attention with a logo or a flashy design. Now, nothing is perfectly odor-controlled from the detection of drug dogs, but with proper vigilance, containers from Stealth-Products.com will help you avoid nosy humans. You're now listening to Elliot Beats. Stealth-Products.com. Stealth-Products.com. Medical marijuana, industrial hemp, consumer cannabis. It's time for this week's Normal News with Cannabis Carry. We talked about an hour or two yesterday, and it was the talk of the community over the weekend. The Connecticut Senate debated much longer than anticipated over the medical marijuana law they were considering last Friday, but ultimately voted to approve that bill that was approved by the House earlier in the session. Connecticut Normal Coordinator Eric Williams worked hard on the language of the bill and pushed for its passing through both legislative bodies and now on to the governor's desk. Governor Daniel Malloy is expected to sign the historic bill. Statewide efforts to get this medical marijuana bill passed resulted in tens of thousands of phone calls, letters, and meetings with legislators. Patients as well as doctors reached out to state legislators asking them to pass this law. The Senate voted 21 to 13 to approve the bill to legalize medical marijuana for those that qualify after a contentious 10-hour debate. The House had previously passed that bill 91 to 56 in April. With the governor's signature, the law would go into effect on April 1st. Now, here are some specifics of Connecticut's new law. To qualify, you need to be certified by a physician of having cancer, glaucoma, HIV, AIDS, Parkinson's disease, MS, damage to the nervous tissue of the spinal cord with objective neurological indication of intractable spasticity, uh, epilepsy, cachexia, wasting syndrome, Crohn's disease, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, they also made a provision where the Department of Consumer Protection, along with an eight board, uh, eight-member board of physicians that would be established under the new law, can also approve any medical condition for the program if they review the case and deem that patient eligible. Now, it is a no-home-grow law, meaning that the marijuana a patient receives must come from a dispensary where only a pharmacist can dispense the medical marijuana to the registered patient. Now, you have to be 18, prisoners can't qualify, and they do allow a designated primary caregiver, as long as they have never had a controlled substance violation, to obtain and possess medical cannabis for the purpose of providing it to their registered patients. Now, doctors are barred from any financial gain in a dispensary business. That's quite common in the new laws now. And producers would pay to be licensed to cultivate marijuana to distribute it to a dispensary, of which the state will have at least three but no more than 10. A fee to be a producer is $25,000, and you'd have to renew that every five years. Health insurers do not have to pay for medical marijuana, as stated in the bill. Now, the quantities are a bit of a gray area in the bill. A patient can have no more than a one-month supply at any given time. Landlords, employers, and schools cannot discriminate against you if you are a medical marijuana patient. Now, this is not the first time lawmakers have passed a medical marijuana bill in Connecticut. They passed a bill in 2007, but then Governor Jody Rell uh, vetoed it. And last year, Governor Daniel P. Malloy backed a medical marijuana bill that would have allowed patients to grow their own marijuana, but it failed to become a law when it was voted down in the House. So congratulations, Connecticut, our newest medical marijuana state. Yes, let's hear it for the state of Connecticut. The Nutmeg State has... Uh Recognize medical use of cannabis. Uh, we could point out, you know, nitpick some of the bad things in here. I mean, not letting anyone under 18 have medical marijuana. Well, that's kind of problematic. There are some kids uh, who have some severe problems. Epilepsy is, is one of them that I can think of where they could benefit from medical use of cannabis. Uh, not having home grow, of course, that's problematic. We always want to see patients be able to grow their own medicine in, in these uh, laws. Uh, but generally here, I, I think it's pretty good. Um, I do worry about that one month supply. I know in Washington, State, when they passed their law originally, I-692, had a 60-day supply uh, codified into law, but never said how much that is. So when you went out to uh, Seattle, well, it was a lot of medicine. When you went out to Yakima, not 
so much medicine, right? It was kind of determined on an ad hoc county by county basis. And I would have hoped that Connecticut could have avoided that by specifying some specific limit so patients and caregivers and providers can really know exactly if they're under that limit or not, instead of having to guess whether what they have is one month's supply in a cop's or a prosecutor's eyes. But uh, this whole story of Connecticut is one of my proudest moments here uh, working for normal. Rewinding back a few years ago, we had a blow up with our former Connecticut normal or normal Connecticut, I think they were called at the time, when uh, they were trying to pass a decrim bill. It was just about to get through the Connecticut legislature when one of our uh, vice presidents of the previous Connecticut normal chapter uh, wrote a scathing email to Senator Tony Boucher, uh, causing her to revoke her uh, support for it and causing a lot of bad press for the movement and for uh, Connecticut decriminalization in general. Then that uh, we, we disbanded that chapter and then we found Eric Williams, who was willing to put the chapter back together as Connecticut normal. And in the time Eric Williams has been the head of Connecticut normal, we have made Connecticut the 14th decriminalization state and the 17th medical marijuana state. So it shows how you can go from the doldrums, from being as far back as you could possibly be as far as uh, the political sensibilities and the perception of marijuana reform goes, and how one person can get involved with this and get others behind them to lead and make positive changes in marijuana laws. It can happen anywhere. It will happen everywhere. And the good people like Eric Williams at Connecticut Normal should be praised for the work they've done. Now, changes in marijuana policy are happening large and small in our country. Yesterday, a city council meeting that went down in Charlottesville, Virginia, ended with the council approving a resolution by three to two to ask their state to reconsider their cannabis policies. The council had an hour-long discussion about what they could and should do about cannabis punishments. In Virginia, possession of any amount of marijuana is a misdemeanor with a punishment of up to 30 days in jail and fines of up to $500. Any second conviction carries a jail sentence of up to a year and fines up to $2,500. The idea for the resolution was brought to the city council by a 23-year-old normal activist, Jordan McNeish. The resolution calls on the Virginia General Assembly and the governor of Virginia to revisit the sentencing guidelines that merit jail terms for simple possession, do away with rules that suppose intent to distribute without evidence, and give due consideration to sponsored state bills that would decriminalize, legalize, and regulate marijuana like alcohol. Now, the original resolution also asked for the police in Charlottesville to make marijuana crime the lowest priority crime to enforce. The counselors were split on the issue. The representatives from the police department were there at the meeting with statistics that they said showed that marijuana crimes in Charlottesville were already low priority and that by passing a re resolution like that would send the wrong message to Charlottesville youth. The city manager read a statement from the Charlottesville Police Department that said they are duty bound to enforce the laws of the city, the state and the federal government. And the memo went on to say that a priority directive would be unnecessarily since they utilize the funding of the department to appropriately address higher priority crimes other than marijuana. Now, when the public comment period opened Monday night, Six consecutive people speaking on the marijuana issue urged counselors to vote against the resolution. One resident warned that if passed, the resolution would turn the city into a town of potheads. And another, former Tea Party leader Carol Thorpe, said that directing priorities at police were politicizing them, and that would be a danger in using the police department to promote a political agenda or fight for the other side. Now, also against the resolution was Mayor Satendra Huja who, and Councillor Kathy Galvin, who opposed the original resolution and voted no on the single paragraph version that left out the lowest priority. The mayor said that passing such a resolution would detract from the community health, safety and welfare of the citizens. But two city council members supported the original stronger resolution. Dave Norris said he felt that it was perfectly legitimate for the council as an elected body to direct community policing priorities. He said that there are other priorities that they're going in the wrong direction when it comes to the war on drugs. Dee Dee Smith, the other councilor member, added, we don't have the power to decriminalize marijuana, but I think it does send the message actually in support of those who can. Now, the swing vote came from Kristen Sacco, who voted no on the original resolution, but yes on the one paragraph version, asking the state to reconsider cannabis punishments and regulation. Now, though resolution was passed, councilors stressed that marijuana is still illegal in the city of Charlottesville. Well, good news, though, that our local uh, normal activists there are getting a shout out from the city council. That's awesome. And, you know, folks, these kind of symbolic resolutions, you know, calling on the city to call on the state to possibly maybe think about perhaps reviewing the cannabis laws. I know that seems like the babiest of baby steps, but it's how these things start. You get the city 
on record as supporting changes in marijuana law reform. And then you get the next city and the next city and the next city. And you build this up to a momentum where the politics at the state level require the state to have to at least address the issue, to at least talk about it. This is how progress is made. There is no magic bullet for legalization. Man, if I had an email for every or if I had a dollar for every email I get from someone that said, we'll march on the White House and marijuana will be legalized. It just doesn't work that way. It's this long, slow grind of very boring political minutia, sitting in on city council meetings, pressuring councilmen and aldermen and commissioners and mayors and all of that local level politics. And that's what you can do by getting involved with your local normal chapter. Check out normal.org slash chapters for the one near you or send an email to start at normal.org if you'd like to start your own. In the battle-weary medical marijuana state of Montana, advocates there have been locked in a bitter lawsuit to try and repeal the restrictive medical marijuana law that was passed by state legislators to override the voter-passed medical marijuana law from 2004. Yesterday, the president of the Montana cannabis industry, Chris Lindsay, said that they are struggling financially to see the case through to Supreme Court hearing that should be later this month. The medical marijuana advocacy group is asking medical marijuana providers to please increase their financial support of the organization. Lindsay says that the group has no plans to drop the case, but he says he wants to emphasize to the people that will benefit from this lawsuit that there is no free lunch. The Montana cannabis industry is challenging the law that was passed last summer that bars the sale of medical marijuana and places tougher restrictions than those passed by voters to register for the program as well as imposes stiff regulations over the doctors that can recommend patients for the state registry. At the time, Governor Brian Schweitzer had vetoed an outright appeal of the 2004 medical marijuana law, but then let a more restrictive law pass without a signature. Legislators at the time said that the law was needed to rein in a medical marijuana industry they say was out of control. A state judge has since blocked some portions of the law from taking effect, and the Montana Supreme Court will hear arguments against the injunction on May 30th. But the organization that is behind the lawsuit say they cannot continue fighting without more financial support. The Montana Cannabis Association has already spent about $150,000 of money they've collected, but say that the cost of keeping up the suit will probably run another $100,000. Now, the problem could be the amount of people left that have a stake in the outcome. The number of registered medical marijuana providers in Montana has dropped 91% since last spring of 2011, when a wave of raids and crackdowns resulted in many shops closing their doors and then many more closing them when the latest law went into effect. The Montana cannabis industry focusing on the lawsuit means that they will not be active in publicizing the referendum they sponsored, the Not Repeal Act that will be on the November ballot. That is a referendum, referendum asking Montana voters to repeal the newest medical marijuana law and allow the voter pass marijuana law to stand. Another advocacy group, Patients for Reform, uh, that also sponsored the Not Repeal referendum will lead that campaign effort to get Montana voters to the vote once again for the marijuana law they passed in 2004. Yeah, what a nightmare in Montana. Just shows how the pendulum is swinging back in some states as far as the support of medical marijuana. This is a critical test here. If you'd like to support the Montana Cannabis Industries Association, their website is mtcia.org. That's one track there, the uh, the lawsuit that they're using. The other track here is what Kerry mentioned, the, uh, the referendum. This is IR-124 in the state of Montana. And what it does is it, it's a referendum for the people to agree with the repeal that just passed. So what you need to do in Montana is vote against IR-124. You got to vote no on IR-124 if you want the medical marijuana law to go back to the way it was when the people of Montana originally passed it by over 60%. Now, already this passage of this SB-423 that the people are referendering, referendumming here to uh, in the election has, as Kerry said, reduced the number of providers by 91%. There are no medical marijuana providers in 24 out of 56 Montana counties now because of this change. Also, the patient rolls have dropped from a high in June of 2011. Just this last summer, there were 30,036 patients, over 30,000 patients. Today, there's just barely over 10,000 patients in the state of Montana. Not like they got well, they're just getting their medical marijuana on the black market now and risking the chance of being arrested and thrown in a cell. Hey, Russ, what do you think about a break? I think a break is a good idea, especially considering what I'm smelling going around there on the other side of the table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be a good time. Back right after this with Bum Lucky from Cinco de Motor. It's 20 after the hour, and we have to take a short break, if you know what I mean. 
Please support these sponsors who support Normal Show Live. Oh, have you ever met that funny repo man? A repo man. Have you ever met that funny repo man? A repo man. If he said he swam to China, he would send you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that repo man. I'm Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger. At TGAgenetics.com, we are working on the leading edge of medical strains. Our strains are rigorously tested for THC, CBD, THCV, and other critical cannabinoids. Know your grow. Check out our genetic diversity at TGAgenetics.com. The home of Jelly Bean, Jack the Ripper, Vortex, and other award-winning cannabis strains. Tune in to the Normal Network for Irie Wednesday, featuring the best of reggae, ska, calypso, Latin, and Hawaiian toker tunes, with premiere episodes every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern and replays at 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. on the Normal Network and online at tunes.normal.org. Hi, this is Alan St. Pierre, Executive Director of Normal. This year, the Drug Stars Office has a $60 million budget for advertising their Reefer Madness propaganda. We here at Normal don't have that kind of money, but we've got two weapons for fighting back. Your donations and the truth. Please, make a donation to Normal so we can continue to expand this podcast and our other media campaigns. Even a donation of $4.20 can help. Visit us on the web at norml.org or call toll-free 888-67-NORMAL, N-O-R-M-L. Thank you for caring and sharing. Give me the weed, that's what I need. When I smoke it, satisfaction guaranteed. I smoke it, satisfaction guaranteed. Down, 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 down. It's time for your daily toker tunes, the best in 420 friendly music from all genres that uplifts, entertains, and informs the public. Today we bring you tunes for Electric Tuesday, our segment featuring the best of modern electric music in the genres of dance, new age, house, and experimental. If you'd like to submit your song to be played on Normal Show Live, send it to us at stash at normal.org. Now here's some more great independent marijuana music for today's Daily Toker Tunes. Well, as you know, I was in Dallas for Cinco de Mota this last weekend, and they had all sorts of great bands that were playing there for the festivities. Uh, I, I railed on about uh, my favorite band there, uh, the FNAs. Uh, I got their CD here for you, the, the FNAs. Great band name, and we're going to play them on Thursday. Uh, also, tomorrow I'll have another band uh, to play for us from uh, Cinco de Mota. But today, uh, our first Cinco de Mota band is one called Bum Lucky, and I forget exactly where they're from, but I believe it's from the uh, local Dallas area. So, uh, without much uh, further introduction here, we'll turn things over to Cinco de Mota. This is Bum Lucky live this uh, last Saturday.
That's Bum Lucky from the Cinco de Mota celebration in Dallas, Texas. Check out dfwnormal.org for more of the videos and information on how you can get involved in ending marijuana prohibition in the Lone Star State. When we come back, we are going to have Todd and Todd's Toker Topics and more stuff from Cinco de Mota and the Portland Global Marijuana March. So stick around. This is Normal Show Live. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak to my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. Wiz Coleco's wallet and cell phone are missing again. And Taco Bell's already been searched. We got to look somewhere else. Normal Show Live reminds you to never smoke and drive impaired. Hang on for a while and share. This day was hard and your work was long. And you need a break from all that's wrong. You better look at the clock because it's 419. Time to reach in that pocket for your bag of green and smoke that weed. Smoke that weed, smoke that weed, smoke that weed. As High Times Senior Cultivation Editor, I'm often called into the field and asked to sample or even identify exotic strains of marijuana in their natural habitat. Now, for the first time, I've compiled more than 120 of my favorite strains into this single field guide designed to fit into your pocket as you travel the world in search of your favorite plant. From a friend's closet grow room to the wilds of Northern California, this single guide covers all of today's best known strains, plus heirlooms and throwbacks, including high times quality photos and information on each variety's genetic heritage and growing characteristics, plus my personal notes on aroma, flavor, and potency. So this is Danny Danko, author of the official High Times Field Guide to Marijuana Strains, wishing you good times and great ganja. The official High Times Field Guide to Marijuana Strains is available at hightimes.com and finer bookstores. Here at Normal Show Live, we spend all week taking a look at the tragedy of American marijuana prohibition. But it's important to take a break and remember that we are a vibrant, diverse, and oftentimes hilarious community of people. 
So our friend, comedian Todd Armstrong, joins us to poke fun at one of Todd's Toker topics. Oh, we've been waiting for Todd's Toker topic for a while. What do we have today? Uh, following your dreams. Let's follow your dreams. Go right on to it. I am following my dreams. Actually, for the past two days, I've been living in a van I bought. Oh, down yes. by the river? Uh, no, actually by my parents' house, <laughs> by the river, kind of close. Okay. But uh, now we're test running it to do my uh, comedy tour across the nation slash uh, hitting paddle boards spots across the nation for me and the wife to do vacation work. So oh, awesome. My version of a dream. It's kind of awesome. My mom thinks I'm kind of weird, but my dad's a former hillbilly, so he was thinking how awesome it was I'm doing the exact same thing my grandparents did. <laughs> so, uh, no, but uh, following your dreams. And I love that about potheads because we often are most, uh, I guess, guilty of procrastination. And I, I am a victim of that. I put off my dreams of doing comedy for a long time. But uh, Ganji John helped me uh, enjoy my dream of recording my first DVD on Saturday night. Oh, I did not. <laughs> you stopped, John. Oh, fabulous. stop it. And he brought some fabulous uh, treats from Denver back to keep me in the right state of mind fabulous. for an hour and 15 minutes up on stage in front of drunk as hell former meth heads, I'm assuming. Uh, <laughs> I had the worst heckler experience of my entire life. Though, I heard. During my dream. And I, I, I love this, though, because I later found out after all of this stuff, this was my father's boss's wife. <laughs> Correct. Uh, my brother was so proud down at Freightliner that his brother managed to completely threaten his boss by finger banging her butthole out of the whole aisle way if she didn't shut up. <laughs> It was pretty check funny. It out. I have never, ever, ever. I that was about the eighth time for me to get her to be quiet. But I realized that that's part of your dreams. You follow those things, and there's sacrifices I have to make about following my dreams. Is that I still need to live like as legal while traveling across state lines, and that's why I do so many jokes about rescheduling. And the one linchpin to me following the dreams of my happiness is my wife having her medicine and me being able to travel. Yeah. And that dream is completely inhibited by what we talked about last week: is Eric Holder's signature. If you really want to break it down to that, is my dream is completely limited by a ridiculous viewpoint of a scheduling of a drug. That's it. If we just took away the federal viewpoint on it, my life would get a lot easier. But that's what I need to talk about is I will be, this is the last Todd's Toker topic that I can vouch for for a while. Because I'll be following my dreams and out arguing the deschedulization of things in states that aren't legal. Because I want to talk to these hecklers that don't know what the hell they're talking about. I want to tell these people that... The reason we can't wear perfume in, in, indoors is because those things cause migraines and cancer. <clears throat> the reason that we can't switch it into a pill is because that's just for capitalism so that they can sell it because a, pill, you know, a plant's just easy to get rid of. And this is a part of following my dreams, and I, I love this. And I want to go to people that, that, that want to hear about this. I want to see normal and have you guys, if you want to see me and my stupid dick jokes and about my Schedule 1 jokes, you can you can email John here. You can set up whatever you want. We can talk to normal. But uh, come out and see my van. I'd love to see your strains. Uh, it's I really enjoyed doing this, and I really look forward to doing another one in July. I can vouch for that one because we'll be back at Helium. But uh, until then, I hope Brian will uh, take the torch and be very funny and have fun here. And uh, maybe a, look, a few less uh, jokes about how small or large his butthole is and a few more jokes about politics. But we can only, <laughs> we can only hope. So. But thank you and thank you very much. I didn't even know I was coming. But thank you and good luck, man. We all, we, we all wait, wish wait, you wait, the wait, best. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. He doesn't get this segment. <laughs> <laughs> no. You, it's oh. not yours to give no, away. No, no. I'm saying I'm fucking, I hope I'm fucking with you. he takes over the torch. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I really want to come to your I area, I just experienced everybody. a lot of emotions within seven seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good stuff. But, you know, this is, you, you revert back to your xylophone playing skills, and you, you fucking temper yourself, and you go, and you just do this. Like, you, you did Juilliard. You can do this, homeboy. You, you do these things. But, uh, Thank but, you. But, yeah. <laughs> But everybody have fun, and I appreciate doing this. I, this has been a great experience. I've met a lot of great people, and I continue wanting to do reporting, I guess, r remote Todd's Toker Topics, and I'll be yeah. doing that from a four-track in a van with some paddle boards and a scooter on the back of it with my lovely wife and my rad dog. So uh, email me at armtodstrong.com for both booking dates and DVDs and for me to come see. I'm going to for sure see a lot of folks in San Francisco for the cup, and I'll see Rolla J, which I believe it's his birthday today. Happy birthday to Happy Rolla birthday, J. Rolla J. Thank Congrats you for on your birth. You deserve it. Hospitality, uh, drive, Happy and also you. sticking in there while the, the system tries to finger bang you. So. Yeah. Right on. Well, Paul, I love you. Thank you guys. Thank you everybody for and being so gracious. Uh, in the coming weeks, we're going to offer Todd's DVD as an audio file. 
uh, for four dollars and twenty cents. Fantastic. Yes, yeah. with uh, the portions going towards the show. Well, I got to I got to tell you that uh, this segment's been one of the favorite segments of the people uh, in the chat room. I see them. You know, on the days that you're not here, I, I see it scroll <laughs> up in the chat room. Oh, there's no Todd. Oh, so. Uh, but it's all good stuff because I'll either be paddleboarding with a wife or telling jokes on those Tuesdays. So it's that's all right. it's all good news for me. And you can still get me with the email. I'm going to get a satellite uh, thing for the laptop, so I'll still be in connection. I'll still be watching the show and hopefully. Yakking it up in the chat rooms as well. We could we could have uh, my friend. we could have uh, Todd Armstrong's Red State Report. <laughs> yeah, no shit. That's that's <laughs> I'll, you can you can hear about White Boy in Memphis. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm, I'm gonna, right. Honestly, I'm writing a book too. So look for the book at the year and a half. So All right, folks, check point. it out. ArmToddStrong.com. He's going on tour to a city near you. When we come back, more highlights from the march. You're listening to Normal Show Live, the voice of the marijuana nation. Normal, unlike any other marijuana or drug reform organization, is built from the ground up by grassroots activists. We are the Marijuana Smokers Lobby, and we aren't just anti-prohibition, we're pro-marijuana. Every week, we take some time to talk to the citizens of local normal chapters across the country and around the world, as well as others who are working to make a difference in the fight to end adult marijuana prohibition. In this segment, we call grassroots activism. Well, everybody always points to 420 as the high holy holiday for stoners, but for me, it's that first Saturday in May when people all around the world get together to march and celebrate and fight for the end of adult marijuana prohibition. There are a lot of great speakers in all the cities all across the world, and of course, I'm going to focus on two cities, Dallas, where I was, and Portland, Oregon, and I've got some video here from the folks at Oregon Normal and our good friend Herb Thrasher from Normal Rocks at Herb Thrasher. This is his speech as he spoke at the uh, Pioneer Courthouse Square for uh, Oregon Normal's Global Cannabis March. Check it out, Herb. What's up, guys? I'm Scott, also Herb Thrasher out there in the world. I host a rock show for Normal live on Friday nights. And uh, just being active, you know, that's what we uh, do. As Madeline said, uh, I've been a board member for Oregon Normal. In, in fact, I've, I mean, I've been with this on this train with Madeline and Anna and, and Paul and, I mean, just for a long time, man. It's been a long time. In fact, this is a good time to give her an applause for everything that she's done because it's been a great ride. This Oregon Normal ride has been a great ride. And, and, and here we are. I mean, this march has been going on for well over 10 years, as she said. And we've just kept it going. And you guys, I've, I've seen you here many years. I've seen some new faces here right now. But I see a lot of old faces, too. And I appreciate everyone who has always supported this community and everything that you do. And, and, and that's all I ask out of anyone. I mean, you've heard some good stories up here and you've heard some activism stuff and there's no sense in me carrying on. But you know, it's real important to support the Okta, the I-24, the Sensibles, the whatever that comes upon you for freedom, man, and for what your rights are. I mean, a lot of these, they're so close. I mean, we're over 80,000 signatures for Okta. The I-24 is up there, Sensibles up there. Let's go, man. I mean, we're on the finish line right here. We've got a great chance to get this on, on the ballot, man, and you guys need to get fired up. It's time. The thing we've got to start doing now is you guys are here, but your friends and your family isn't. And, uh, you know, like Madeline said, man, we need to get off the couch, man. We got like less than two months now to really pull together and get this thing going. And uh, just, just support the community, man. Get fired up. Do what you do. You know, speak your beliefs. Write your congressmen. Make phone calls. Facebook's the best thing now. I mean, I don't know. You guys are on Facebook. I'm not too much. I am a little bit. But, man, I mean, keep posting. I see all those posts that you guys do on Facebook. I see John Lucy on Facebook. And, you know, everyone's on Facebook, and so keep posting, do what you do, support the community, support Herb Age Design, support Normal, support everyone, and uh, I just appreciate everything you're doing. You know, one last thing I'd like to end on is, you know, like, I have a kid, and a lot of you guys out here, parents, maybe not, a lot of you guys like cartoons, and uh, in the mornings, there's this cartoon, and it's called uh, Dinosaur Train, and uh, everyone, you know, it's like, we got the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the Pterodons and all these other guys. And, you know, they're all on this train. They're different. They're all part of different groups, but they're all on the same train. And they get on that train in the morning and they cruise forward. And that's what we got to do. Our train in our community is one train, and that's the cannabis train. And we all need to get on the cannabis train 
and chug a lug for freedom. Keep supporting, guys. Keep rocking. Of course, Herb Thrasher there from Normal Rocks with Herb Thrasher every Friday night at 8 o'clock uh, Pacific here on the Normal Network. Now, uh, we're going to switch over to Dallas, Texas, where Sean McAllister and the group uh, DFW Normal put on the Cinco de Mota. Uh, CBS News 11 from Dallas came down to uh, interview uh, and take some, uh, some video from the event. And we have some of that news footage from CBS 11 featuring Sean McAllister, the executive director of DFW Normal. Today, people in Dallas and across the world are fighting for the right to smoke marijuana. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws is holding a festival just outside Dallas City Hall. The group says their push isn't just about being able to smoke pot, but to tell community leaders that they want to see an end to the drug war and violence associated with marijuana bans. Texans, do we want to be one of the first to legalize marijuana and start making some tax money back and maybe fund schools and public roads? Or do we want to be one of the last and continue to enforce barbaric rules that don't do anything for the demand, don't do anything to actually stop people from using cannabis? All it does is waste a bunch of people's resources, ruins people's lives, and throws people in jail. Today's event in Dallas is part of the annual Global Marijuana March held today in more than 100 cities across the planet. Uh, that uh, number is way low. It's over 300 cities across the planet. But uh, hey, good enough. You got Dallas-Fort Worth normal on the uh, evening news. That's great stuff. Now, Sean McAllister continued at the event where he delivered his speech at Cinco de Mota. If you've been listening to the Normal Network, you may recognize parts of it. He basically took the Charlie Chaplin Great Dictator speech and uh, adjusted it just a a little bit to make it for marijuana legalization. Uh, there were some problems at the beginning with the musical accompaniment, but otherwise, this is a pretty powerful speech. Check it out. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't want to be in it. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I'd like to help everyone if possible. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate, despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich. With him, we can provide for everyone. Our way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded us with hate, has two-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in war. Our knowledge has made us cynical. Our cleverness is hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life would be violent and awful. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. The internet has brought us closer together. The very nature of the web cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. After this moment, our voice has the potential to reach millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and little children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and the dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people. So long as we fight, liberty will never perish. People, don't accept slavery. Demand liberty. Don't give yourselves to brutes, men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds, machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. We don't hate. Only the unloved hate. The unloved and the unnatural. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke, it is written that the kingdom of God is within man. Not one man, not a group of men, but in all men. You, the people, you, the people, have the power to grow happiness, the power to create a life that can be free and beautiful. And in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us march for a new world, for a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give you 
into the future and old age of security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie. They do not fulfill their promise. They never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Let us march to fulfill that promise. Let us march to free the world, to do away with the war on certain American citizens using non-pharmaceutical, non-alcoholic, tobacco-free drugs. To do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us march for a world of reason, a world where science and progress, uh, science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. People, in the name of freedom, let us all march! With Sean McAllister from the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Normal Chapter at Cinco de Mota in Dallas, Texas. We go back now to the state of Oregon, back to Portland for this next one. And uh, a good friend to uh, all of us here at the show, John Lucy. You know this guy, John? This John I Lucy I do fella? know him a little bit. Yeah, uh, he's, he's swell. I've, I've, yeah, yeah. I want to party with that guy. Yeah, he's a swell dude, I hear. So <laughs> he was there at the Global March, and I have to say, dressed quite dapper. Oh, dude, he is a dapper dog, <laughs> for sure. He is definitely uh, evoking the uh, Southern gentleman look in this video. So check it out. It's John Lucy, attorney from the Normal Legal Committee uh, on your rights. You need to know about this. What I came down here to tell everyone is how to stay out of trouble. If you're down here already, you probably know how to stay out of trouble. You've probably talked to a lawyer at some point, somebody like Paul Loney, Lee Berger, myself. You may have looked on the websites, looked on the normal website, have a freedom card. But what I want to teach every single one of you is how to protect your rights, okay? So, I have a business card. I don't know if any of you have ever seen it. Some of you may have it, some of you may not. If you're really lucky, you've got one of the rubber glow-in-the-dark wristbands that says, I want my lawyer and has my telephone number on it. It helps protect your rights. There's a whole bunch of them, but we're out right now. So what I want everyone to do is listen very closely and repeat after me, okay? So you understand how to keep yourself out of trouble if it ever happens. God forbid, quite frankly, I hate seeing any of you in my office unless it's on pleasure. Quite frankly, for business, it's not very fun, okay? Unless you're opening a store or you're doing something like that, that's wonderful. I love you guys for that. But when you have a criminal charge, no one really likes to come see me, okay? So remember to be polite, but assert your rights. So... I do not consent to any searches. I do not consent to any searches. I do not wish to answer any questions. I do not wish to answer any questions. I invoke my right to silence. I invoke my right to silence. I wish to consult with my attorney. I wish to consult with my attorney, Tom Lucy <laughs> Whoever you pick, that's fine. I want to keep you out of trouble until you can come see one of us, okay? Quite frankly, if you can remember to say that, your legal bills will go down by about 90%. Okay? This is the best free legal advice you're ever going to get. Quite frankly, most people who come to me start with, I didn't really know what to say, so I told them everything. Is that bad? That's really bad. Okay? The only way I can protect your rights is if you invoke them. For example, that's one of the reasons whenever Occupy breaks out. Occupy broke out the other day. I was at the bank taking care of some business, but you know what? I ran out. I checked to see who was doing okay. I checked to make sure if anybody needed a lawyer. And you know what? I'm really loud. I don't need this microphone to be really loud. So, if you see me, if you're an Occupy, if you're a medical marijuana patient, if you're just a citizen on the street and you need something and you need it in that moment and you really need a lawyer's help, feel free to tap me on the shoulder. I'm not going to lie, if I'm out having drinks or dinner or something like that and you just want to have a chat, maybe call the office. But if you're getting arrested, throw your hand up and say, I need a lawyer. It may not be me. You know what? Lots of us walk around. I don't look like this every day. If you've seen me walking around in just a t-shirt and shorts, you know I don't wear a suit this fine every day. Okay? When I gotta go to work, go to the office of God every now and again. But what I'm trying to emphasize is lawyers are trying to help you. Okay? We're the guys who, quite frankly, yeah, when you come to us and you've got a problem, it costs a lot of money, and we know that. Heaven help us if you've ever seen what law school tuition looks like. Those student loans will kill just about anyone. They're bigger than most people's mortgages, okay? So that fancy piece of paper in that office I've got is really just a very large debt note to a very large institution somewhere, okay? 
if you come to see us though, and you've got a problem, I talk to everybody for free for 30 minutes if they have a criminal charge. If you want business stuff done, I don't, you know, I got a charge for that because quite frankly, otherwise my office would be have a line seven blocks long. But if you've got a criminal problem, I talk to everybody for free on that, even if only to tell them, look, here's what you got to tell your public defender so I can help you out. I want to keep people out of metal cages, okay? No one belongs in a metal cage for marijuana. I want everyone to say that with me. No one belongs in a metal cage for marijuana. Thank you. That's John Lucy from the Normal Legal Committee. One of the people I always point to whenever I get those haters is like, oh, normal, normal lawyers just want to keep it illegal so they can make a lot of money. BS and John Lucy is just one of the proofs of that to a maxim right there. All right, we're going to move on to another speech from Portland, Oregon. This is our own Sarah Frank. She is uh, the executive director of Moms for Marijuana. She was there at the square in Portland, Oregon with her pitch for why we need to legalize marijuana to help our children, help protect our children. This is Sarah. I just moved here a year ago from Idaho. In Idaho, they will throw you in jail for being near a clean bong. Yep. Not even used. They'll throw you in jail That's for a year, but they'll let violent offenders out on the streets and they'll take away our children. And the reason that I got involved in cannabis activism is I was sick. I got sick when I was 19 and I was pregnant at the time with my youngest child. And they gave me Demerol, and they gave me Vicodin, and they gave me Darvacet and Percocet and Oxycontin, but they didn't give me cannabis. And when I found out the cannabis is safer than all of those, I kind of got a little pissed off. So here I am, and I started a MySpace page called Moms for Marijuana, and that grew into 46 subchapters across the world. Now those subchapters are spread out across six different countries, including Indonesia, uh, South Africa, England, Canada, and the United States. And we are pissed off moms and dads and grandparents, and not even parents. Um, you don't have to be a parent. You just have to care about the future of our world and the future generations. And one of our chapters started, we started here in Portland, and it's trying to get up and get going. And what we want to see is all of these groups, all of these people with Sensible Oregon and with Okta and with uh, Oregon Normal and SSDP and LEAF and everybody. And we want everybody to join with us and make a big old scene because if we're all together, we're really loud and they can't ignore us any longer. <laughs> so join with us. We've got some big things coming up this year um, across the country. We have some conferences that we're planning and here in Portland, we have a meeting the second Saturday of every month. We're going to have rallies every month because the drug war doesn't work. We know this. And the drug war is a war on you, it's a war on me, and it's a war on our children. Our children go to jail, our children lose their futures, their educations, and we even have three-week-old babies being ripped from nursing mother's arms because she uses cannabis. We have hospitals getting involved in the lives of patients despite their, the medical law in the own state. We have school counselors who don't know the medical laws and send police officers to the parents' houses because the children are scared because they're lying to them. And they say that this cannabis is going to hurt them when mommy's at home getting it from the doctor. That's contradicting and we need to stop these lies. We need to stop the generations the cycle of lies that are passed down from our generations. I thought cannabis was bad, so I didn't even think to go try it when I got sick. And that was because my parents lied to me. But they didn't know that. They thought they were doing what's in my best interest because their parents lied to them. And their parents lied to them, and we need to stop this now. That's right. We need to stop the lies. Sarah Frank there from Moms for Marijuana. And we conclude uh, with uh, Justin James Bridges. We're only getting stronger. I want to thank you all for coming out. And like you've heard over and over again, we are all fighting for the same cause. And like Deborah said so wonderfully, like, yeah. we are all in this together. And the, we have to make the change. Some of y'all might not know who I am. My name is Justin James Bridges, and I was the interpreter for the deaf at Occupy Portland. And on November 13th, 2011, during our eviction day, 
that I've heard politicians say was the best of Portland and other things like this. A disgusting group of vile individuals in uniform came into our camp while we were peaceably assembling like we have the right to do and they attacked us. I hit the ground because I have a broken back and my back went out from them pushing us. They were told that I was injured. They grabbed me by my ankles and drug me into the park and brutally attacked me. I have been in a wheelchair for almost six months now because of this incident. I just got feeling back in my hand yesterday. They cannot shut me up and I am not going anywhere. I was able to move my thumb on uh, Christmas Eve for the first time since November 13th and I started picking guitar again. Two of the people standing right over here, Deborah, you just heard from, and her partner, Justin165, were there that day on November 13th. Patchwork family formed out of the ashes of the eviction. When I went down that day and the cops pulled me out of my friend's hands, that is where I met Deb and Justin. We met at Occupy, standing up for our rights. I told them during our camp, the news came and talked to me and said that the mayor said no medical cannabis would be allowed at camp. I got in the camera's face and I said, there is nothing you can do about it because I am out of the public's eye and I will continue to medicate because that is our right. There is nothing that this city can do to take our rights from us. If we stand together, we are stronger than any government could possibly imagine. Get your friends, spread the word. We are not going anywhere. We're only getting stronger, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming. There we go. Justin from uh, Occupy Portland was just one of the many people there that were standing up at the Global Cannabis March here in Portland, Oregon. That's all the time we have for our first hour here on Normal Show Live. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. For those of you sticking around for hour two, we got more video plus talk here amongst the round table and our virtual studio and your calls at 971-533-7111. Got some more news on Sativex. Got some more videos out there, including one of my speeches from Cinco de Mota. And again, your calls at 971-533-7111. For Ganja John, Wiz Kalik, O'Brien Blank, Todd Armstrong, and Cannabis Carry, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, take care of each other, tokers. Listening to the Normal Network, where the time is 420, 24 7, 365. It's 5 o'clock in the Pacific Time Zone. The workday is done. Now it's time for Toker Talk Radio, the voice of the Maryland.